The Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid Sport Turismo does not have the catchiest name ever, but it does have 671 brake horsepower, and that, by the way, is more than a Ford GT. I know, I know, it's not a supercar. The Ford GT weighs a fraction of this 2.3 tonne estate car, basically. But having said that, it's more powerful than a Ford GT. It's got more torque than a 991 911 GT2. This thing is absolutely monstrous. It's so, so good. Of course, it's got a four wheel drive system, which is all active and it can fling power to the rear and all that stuff. But I have to say, I mean, it's not just a, a blunt animal, this thing. It is really, really wonderful to drive. The steering's got a lovely sort of light slickness to it that's just perfect for what you want. So it's really easy cruising on the motorway around town. It's perfect. And then if you want to sort of, you know, really give it some and fling it through some corners, it weights up beautifully. You feel really engaged. You know how much traction you've got. It's just awesome. This car does have optional rear axle steering, which actually, given how good this is, I'd say is probably worth it. Maybe the biggest compliment is just to say that if you really want to drive this thing hard, it feels just like a 911. Really, it does. You can forget that it's a, big, a much bigger car with four doors. It just has that same sort of beautiful poise and delicacy and you know, huge amounts of mechanical grip. So you totally trust it and you know exactly what's going on. It really is just spectacular. And then if you want to, of course, you can unleash everything. And this being a Porsche, launch control is, you know, the easiest thing in the world. It's crazy. My nan could do it by accident. So you go, come to our stop, Sport Plus, left foot brake, floor it. <laughs> it's just insane. 0 to 62, officially 3.4. I wouldn't be surprised if it beat that. I mean, it's just wonderful. It's good. It's just, oh, it's just awesome. I love this car. It's just so good to drive. Um, and of course, on top of all of this, once you've uh, once you've had your fun, you can stick it into e-power, sit back and enjoy officially 31 miles of electric running, um, which does really give this car an edge of sort of smug cost saving and eco consciousness that it you know you is just quite incongruous given the performance on offer in the real world i think you can expect probably about 20 miles of electric running is certainly what we're seeing um, i think actually if you're around town a lot then you could probably see that stretch up to 25 miles on a good day and when that v8 twin turbo petrol engine kicks in well you know it's a twin turbo v8 so actually you're probably going to see about 25 mpg again on a good day probably about 20 mpg if you decide to uh, to go for it or even less than that honestly probably you're more concerned about the uh, performance than you are about the mpg having said that really for what it is the efficiency on this car is really really impressive both the official and the real world stuff you know you can actually get away with a significant amount of fuel free running which for a car with that's this good to drive is, is just fantastic. You do feel like you're getting the best of both worlds, the electric side of things, and also, you know, just one of the best engines ever with that V8. So for enthusiasts that don't want to uh, pay for fuel when they go through town and this kind of thing, it's just awesome. So we've established that it's good to drive and then some. Now, how about the electric stuff? Well, the Porsche comes with a standard three-pin domestic cable and also this three-pin industrial plug that will give you faster charging if you can find the necessary plug, often common in campsites or industrial estates. Plug it into the wall at home and the 14.1 kilowatt hour battery will charge up in under eight hours. Or if you plug it into a dedicated car charger, it'll do the same in around four. However, you can pay £500 to up the maximum charging rate from 3.6 kilowatts to 7.2 kilowatts. And that means that it'll charge up in two and a half hours at its fastest when plugged into a charger of 7 kilowatts or more. If you do pay to get the faster charging, then you're probably also going to want to pay to get the Type 2 cable that you're going to need if you want to use public fast chargers. 
And it has to be said that the Panamera is pretty terrible for cable storage in that it doesn't have any. Instead, you have to lug this massive suitcase around with you everywhere. Um, but at least you do get a nice wall mount for the cable to keep it tidy in your garage. The Panamera's interior is really quite hard to fault. Everything looks and feels absolutely beautiful, including the touch sensitive buttons down here, or your steering wheel and your paddles, and it just feels absolutely appropriate for a car, even though actually you can go to town with options on this car. So by the time you've added your glass roof and your rear axle steering and your sports exhaust and your cable and all that kind of stuff, you can quite easily see this car going past 150,000 pounds. Even so, you do still actually get LED headlights, you get keyless entry, you get your cruise control, you get pretty much everything you could want apart from that, including all the electric adjustments to these seats, which do drop really low if you want them to. Really, the only thing that's going to annoy you possibly is that the climate control is all in this screen um, and it can be a little bit funny, so you have to sort of uh, use the screen to change the direction and all that stuff. So it's a bit of a faff, but beyond that, the nav system's great, you get all the kit you really need, and uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful place to sit. Still, at least there is room for a couple of adults in the back and also a 425 litre boot that will serve well for most small families, despite the Sport Turismo's rather lovely shooting brake shape. There is no getting away from the fact that the Porsche Panamera is an expensive car, even if you look at the lower end models, never mind the range topping SE hybrid that we have got here. And yet, if you really think about not just how exquisite it is to drive, to sit in and to live with, but also how many different cars are actually encapsulated in that really stunning body. You've got an estate, you've got a sports car, you've got an electric car, you've got one of the greatest tourers going, and you have a car that is every inch a proper rival to stuff like the Bentley Continental GT. Well, given all of that, it's not just flat out brilliant. It actually starts to look like good value. Head to Driving Electric for all of the electric and hybrid car news, reviews and advice that you could possibly want. And also check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.